Is Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea imminent? Jorginho attracts Arsenal interest and Hakim Ziyech set for PSG loan. Hello there guys, what is going on? Daniel Childs back here again for the first transfer deadline day edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well, hope you're keeping safe. Um, we are set, I think, for maybe quite a long day from a Chelsea point of view. It is going to be a very fascinating one to keep on top of and to see if we do get that massive Enzo Fernandez deal over the line. But also fascinating for who could leave Chelsea today uh, with Jorginho and Hakim Ziyech uh, are going to be kind of the main subject of this morning show. I'm probably going to be back later today uh, because I suspect either way we're going to have stuff to talk about uh, just to kind of reflect on the window. It will probably be a live stream, a, a live version of Let's Talk Chelsea tonight, 6, 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, we'll see how it develops and, and where it goes, but just to kind of reflect on what's gone on today. Um, I, I hope I'm not here at 11 doing anything but we will see because it is transfer deadline day and this is Chelsea Football Club and they like to keep us on our toes if you are new around here make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button ring the notification bell so you've got all the stuff coming from the channel this week uh, regarding Chelsea and particularly today on transfer deadline day and if you are listening on the podcast thank you so much for tuning in son of Chelsea is a part of the 90 min podcast network but let's get into it with Jorginho uh, the story here uh, from Kaya and Adam Newson uh, on football.london uh, lots of reports around this last night Jorginho apparently uh, gaining interest from Arsenal who have kind of suffered a long-term injury apparently to Mohamed Elneny and football.london understands that Arsenal are considering a move for Jorginho the number one target has been Moises Casado from Brighton who they have bid for twice though both of those bids have been rejected even though Moises Casado as we discussed over the weekend uh, made that statement effectively saying I want to leave apparently now Arsenal are thought to be looking at a deal to bring in Jorginho as an alternative Chelsea are understood to be willing to let the Italian international leave before the window closes if the is suitable as they near a deal for Benfica's Enzo Fernandez. Jorginho, and this is the key part of it, has just six months remaining on his contract, so would potentially be available for a lower fee, but it's not thought that a move is advanced at this stage. Of course, this was an article posted last night, so as we know at this time of the year, things can develop very quickly, but Jorginho, it would be bizarre and kind of a bit of a shock even though a lot of us are prepared that this is Jorginho's last period at Chelsea and I think it probably should be to think that by the end of the day he may no longer be a Chelsea player and that kind of Chelsea Jorginho story would be over it's kind of weird given you know how long Jorginho has been at Chelsea all of the divisiveness all of the controversy not around you know not due to the player but you know all the social media stuff uh how Jorginho is going to be viewed his Chelsea legacy and I think that you know when if that deal is confirmed then we can have those conversations but I think from a business point of view this makes a ton of sense it really does Jorginho of his contract situation you know I, I still firmly believe that Chelsea should have cashed in on Jorginho in the summer of 2021 I know that that politically it probably wasn't as popular back then because we just won the Champions League and I think for a lot of people to kind of turn around and go a player who was involved in that Champions League final and had just won the Euro say with Italy to turn around and go we're selling you now um, but that was the same summer that we could have signed Aurelien and Chirmeni. and I just I think there's a point that Chelsea in recent years particularly under the previous ownership just couldn't really gauge when was the right time to sell Chelsea players and, and I think that that was the moment because I, I just don't think Jorginho was ever going to reach that peak again I think it was so evidently clear that that was a peak that maybe a lot of us felt Jorginho may never reach in his career but he did and he d deserves a lot of praise for, for getting there but since then I, I think that you've seen the deterioration in his performances I think that he isn't offering what he did for that short period and it just feels like the right time to move on and if you can get some money for him I think it's the the right time uh, to get that in before his contract expires because then it leaves that conversation open for N'Golo Kante with the contract situation for him and I think it just resolves things and it's really neat to get Enzo Fernandez and that is the the big thing if Enzo Fernandez does not sign for Chelsea today you do not let Jorginho go and that is a problem because financially you'd want to get something for him and maybe if Chelsea know earlier in the day I do wonder if the Conor Gallagher situation will come up again because if clubs are literally offering say 40 million for him uh, maybe that's where we could have a twist on transfer deadline day but 
if we do get Enzo Fernandez, is it just it just feels like the perfect time to move Jorginho on. As I say, it's a little bit abrupt for a player who has been involved at Chelsea for a very long time, a very regular name on our starting eleven. But I think it's the right time to move him on. The other player is Hakim Ziyech at PSG uh, in talks to sign Ziyech on loan. Apparently, Ziyech is in Paris. So this is pretty advanced at this point, And it does seem like this is going to happen. And I think this doesn't have that kind of domino effect. I, I don't think this deal is important to say Enzo Fernandez. It doesn't have another player waiting to come in for him to move out. We've signed Nodi Madawake. We've signed Mikhailo Mudrik. We've got Raheem Sterling returning. So... I think for Ziyech, it has always been that big question, hasn't it, in terms of what is his future at Chelsea? And I think the weird thing is, is you know, he's been heavily involved in recent weeks. Um, and that, you know, that can sometimes be the case, you know, a coach is going to deal with the players that he has at his disposal when Chelsea have had a serious injury list. You know, do does Ziyech get those minutes if uh, Christian Pulisic and Raheem Sterling aren't injured? And I think you'd probably go, the answer is, is no, probably, because before those two got injured, they were playing for Graham Potter just after Christmas. But uh, for Ziyech, for PSG, um, you know, he's 29 now. And there was always this kind of threat that he could be moving on. Uh, he has a contract with Chelsea until June 2025, as the Athletic reports, and has made just 10 Premier League appearances so far this season, with only four of those coming from the start. But, you know, those four, a lot of those have come in recent weeks. And he was involved in the winner against Crystal Palace. I think he had a good game at Anfield against, uh, against Liverpool. So... This is the way it is, but I think, you know, it, it makes way for Chelsea's transitioning of the squad, you know, to really get that refresh and, and to get these players in. And hopefully with Ziyech moving on, it opens up a spot for Nodi Malawake to get involved. So, you know, listen, it, it's a new Chelsea and it, it's about, you know, moving on players who don't have a future here. And as brutal as it is, I want Chelsea to be efficient. And it's it's only on loan, but listen, at the age of 29, with the way Ziyech is, with the way Chelsea are recruiting in that area, we know this is probably it for Hakim Ziyech as a Chelsea player. And hopefully for him and for the club, if he does go to PSG, he gets consistent minutes, Champions League minutes too, and he can kind of be put in a shop window. You know, I think for Ziyech, um, he needed a coach that was going to give him that free play make a role. And there also is a case that I, I just don't think he is adapted to the Premier League very well. And I know I got a comment on my live stream last week in kind of opposition to keeping him at Chelsea for the rest of the season is, you know, Ziyech has been one of these players who will give you two and three appearances where he looks really good really encouraging and then he goes on the missing list which is you know is it is a case for a lot of Chelsea players at the moment that you could list so for Ziyech at his age for the way he's been at Chelsea for the recruitment of younger players in his position it, it's understandable and you know I do wish him the best if he if he does go to PSG hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, it just feels typical that Chelsea will get uh, PSG in the Champions League if we get through and then he'll play against us and probably do well but those are the thoughts on those two deals uh, as I say I'm looking at my screen at the moment because as you expect when you're recording on Transfer Deadline Day things can change so quickly so hopefully we'll get this video out soon hopefully you're having a good morning or wherever you're watching this make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button is today Enzo Fernandez Day and if it is hit that like button as well. Hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at Solid Chelsea. Have a great transfer deadline day and I will see you again likely very soon. All the best.